biochemistry, I'm all about intuition. And no, I'm not talking about any like woo-woo stuff. Instead, I'm talking about being able to kind of think critically and intuit what's going on in a molecular solution without having to go rely on those fancy equations. Those equations are great if you need to put actual numbers to things, but typically what you really care about is, well, like what proportion of something is pronated or not. I could use the anderson hasselbalch equation to tell me the exact proportion, but if what I really care about is the functional relevance, I can just quickly look at the pH and the pKa and be able to see, okay, well, if I'm at the pKa, the pH is at the pKa, that means I have equal amounts of my conjugate acid and my conjugate base. Makes for a great buffer. But what if I go above the pKa? Well, above the a pH above the pKa, that means there's fewer protons around. If there's fewer protons around, well, now the molecule is not going to encounter as many protons to hold, grab onto. And if it loses a proton, well, then it's less likely to find a new one. So as you go up in the pH, you're going to decrease the proportion that's protonated. So if you're above the pKa, well, then you're going to have less than half protonated. What about if you go below the pKa? At a pH below the pKa, you have more protons around. So that acid is more likely to, um, like if it drops off a proton, it's more likely to find a new one. And so you're going to have more of it be protonated at the lower pH. And you can, if you just remember that for every one pH unit you change, that's a tenfold increase or decrease in the amount that's that's protonated or deprotonated. So if you go one pH unit above the pKa, well, this means that you're going to have tenfold more of the deprotonated form, the conjugate base form, than the acid form. And if you go one pH unit below the pKa, remember now you get more protons around, you're gonna have more of it in the protonated conjugate acid form. So above the pKa, more of it's deprotonated, below the pKa, more of it's protonated. And you get a tenfold increase in or decrease for each one unit change in the pH. So if you go one pH unit above your pKa, well now you have tenfold more of your conjugate base, the deprotonated form. And if you go one pH unit below the pKa, well now you have tenfold more of your conjugate acid form, the protonated form. If you go two pH units, well now we're talking about a hundredfold. Three pH units, you're talking about a thousandfold. So anytime you're like three pH units away from the pKa, you can just assume that most, almost all of it is going to be in, in one form. And so if you're above the pKa, most of it's going to be in the deprotonated form. And if you're below the pKa, most of it is going to be in the protonated form. And remember that pK, pKa equal, when the pH equals the pKa, you have equal amounts of acid in your base. And this is why it's a really good buffer uh, because you can kind of like, if the little acid gets added, well, now you've got some base to go and sop it up. If a little bit of base gets added, you've got some acid to go and sop it up. But remember, although the pH isn't going to change much when you're in that buffering range, it is depleting it. And so as you get away from the pKa, you're going to have more of one form than the other, and then you're going to have more and more and more of the one form than the other. And so what's going to happen is when you're going to get out of that pH, that buffering range, and then your pH will really change because, well, you don't have anything to sop up what you're adding. So at the pKa, you have equal amounts of your conjugate acid and conjugate base. Within like one pH unit or so, now you're talking about like tenfold more of one than the other. It's still like significant amounts of both of them. Once you get two pH units, now you have a hundredfold more of one than the other. And three pH units, well now you have a thousandfold more of one than the other. Four. 10,000 volt. Um, and so you can see that as you get further and further away from the pKa, you can kind of just consider that things are all one form or the other. But note that sometimes that really, 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 really small proportion that we consider like nothing is actually really important. So this is especially true for things like catalysis, where you only need a little tiny bit of something protonated or deprotonated, and it can have a large effect. Also know that the pKa can actually be like context dependent. So when we're talking about amino acids, if we talk about lysine, it's got this high pKa. Um, it's typically going to be in its protonated form, but when it's deprotonated, it acts as a really powerful nucleophile. And we actually see this happen. Um, it can have its local, like the, pH, the local pH in that enzyme axon site can be altered and the pKa can be altered. And this is going to make it so that we can deprotonate that lysine and we can actually have these reactions happen in addition to that 
tiny little bit of lysine that is just hanging around in the deprotonated state and then can do various reactions. So know that that tiny amount really can be important. Um, so don't forget about it. It's not really nothing, um, but for the sake of a lot of different things, we can consider things pretty much one form or the other. Whenever you see something and it gives you a pKa, you want to look at the pKa, look at the pH. If it doesn't give you a pH, just kind of like think about what would happen in your body at like a pH of like 7.4 or so. That's typically what we're dealing with. And so if we see a pKa that is below that, well, that means that it's typically, we need to get to lower conditions in order for it to um, be protonated. And so what's going to happen is that we're typically going to be at a pH that's above the pKa, so we're typically going to be in the deprotonated form. If we have something that has a higher pKa than the pH that we're at, well, this means that we're below its pKa, so there's more protons around, so it's going to be mostly in the protonated form. And so this is a really just way to intuitively think about things and realize that sometimes you don't even have to do that fancy math. Now, don't get me wrong, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation really is important, and it can do things like allow you to calculate the exact number of moles of the conjugate acid, the conjugate base, calculate how much of them you'd have to mix together to make a buffer of a certain pH, calculate how the pH would change um, if you had a certain amount of the acid or the base, um, and do that sort of thing. So lots of things that you could use it for, and you can use it to find the exact proportions of your acid and your base, but a lot of times we can just kind of like use this intuitive thinking if we just need a sense of, is it mostly in what, this form or that form?